There are several ways through which you can monitor your endpoints with Zabbix. So one of the ways is install Zabbix agent on your endpoint and then add that endpoint in your Zabbix server. So in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you can configure your Zabbix agent on Windows operating system and then add that Windows operating system as a host on your Zabbix server. So all the links mentioned in this video you will find in the description below. Apart from this, all the steps that I'm going to follow along are listed on my blog post as well, which is on blog.masteringmdm.com. If you go to the home page and on the home page there's a search bar here. So if you search Zabbix and you can see that install and configure Zabbix agent on Windows is one of the search results. So I will click on that and all the steps listed here will be in sync with this video step by step. One more thing I would like to point out, if there's any update comes through and it will be listed here, I will add a section on the blog post. You will see that when this was updated and I will update that blog post if there's any change. Apart from this, I will also put a pinned comment on this video. So keep an eye on the pinned comment. And uh, I've noticed a lot of people, they tend to miss that uh, pinned comment. So if there's any change, it will be listed on the pinned comment as well. Hello IT pros, this is Jay Singh. Welcome to my channel, TechNex Solutions. Follow me on Twitter at this is Jay Singh. And if you're new to this channel, hit the subscribe button and also click on the bell icon as well to get all the latest updates from this channel. All right, so let's get started. So before we jump on to the first step, which is download Windows Zabbix agent, I would like you to do a pre-check of your networking. So you make sure that your Zabbix um, server can ping to your endpoint. So in my case, my endpoint is Windows Server 2019 and uh, it is a domain joined Windows Server, okay? So what I will do on Zabbix server, this is I have connected to my Zabbix server. So here I will try pinging the host, the endpoint, its IP address is 10.0.0.9 and hit enter. We can see that we're getting a reply back. Apart from this, if you have a working DNS, you can test your DNS as well. So what I will do, I will ping the host name. So host name is technex-wac01. Here you go. So you can see that this is a reply back and resolving to an IP address, which is 10.0.0.9. So this tells us the DNS is fine as well. So this is not mandatory. However, if you would like to use the variable called hostname, you need this working. Okay, so I can cancel that. So networking is fine. We can move forward with our first step, which is download Windows Zabbix agent. To do that, we'll go to this website, which is downloads agents. You'll find this direct link in the description and this is listed on the blog post as well. So OS distribution, Windows, OS version, any, Hardware 64 bit, Windows Server comes with 64 bit. So, Zabbix version 5.2. Encryption, I will go with no encryption. Packaging archive, only one option listed here. If I scroll down here, we are going to download the very first one, which is version 5.2.5 in this case. However, it could be, you know, maybe something else while you are watching this video. So, you can go ahead with that. So, Click on download, it's going to download a zipped file. I have already downloaded it. Unzip that file and um, I have actually transferred the file to the host as well to the endpoint, which is right here. In the downloads folder, you can see that Zabbix agent 5.2.5. If I open that, it has further files. So what I'm going to do in the second step, I'm going to move over these files into the right location where I want. So the right location is on the right hand side you can see. So if I click on this PC and then local disk C, here I'm going to create a new folder. I will name it Zabbix. So open this folder. So here we are going to transfer some files. So on the left hand side, it's a downloaded uh, Zabbix agent, open bin. And in bin, we have different files. The file we are interested in is Zabbix underscore agent D dot exe file. You might not see the extensions here. You can click on um, view and then you can uh, check this box here, file name extensions. I'm going to copy this file here and then I'm going to paste it on this side. Okay, so this is done. We'll go back here on the left hand side and then we go to conf folder. 
So in con folder, if you double click and then we have Zavix agent D dot conf. So this is a configuration file. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it here as well. You can move those files if you like. I'm just copying and pasting. Okay, so this looks good. Our files are ready and they're prepared in Zabbix folder in local disk C. So the third step is to prepare the Windows firewall. So you can do it in graphical user interface or you can use PowerShell. On the blog, there's a command listed, one line command. You can copy that and put it in your PowerShell as administrator and run it. And then that will add the firewall rule. I will go through this um, one command, one line command here. So it's very basic. So what you do is you create a new firewall rule. So new dash net firewall. If you hit tab, it will um, auto populate it into new net firewall rule. So, and then we will uh, add a display name for it. Uh, it can be anything. So in my case, I'm just adding allow inbound 10050. Make sure you put quotation marks around it and the direction for this one it's inbound okay so dash direction and i will type in b and then hit tab inbound protocol so this one you have to type protocol just type tcp action so we're going to allow it a double l then hit tab allow so local port so what would be the port number so the port number in this case is 10050 unless you change it in the configuration this is a default port so i'm sticking with the default port in this case profile so this is very important profile make sure what profile you are going to apply on so mine is is a domain joint network so i'm going to stick with domain profile if you're not sure you can go with any as well okay just um, you just type any hit tab you can see that it's already auto populated. So I'm going to stick with domain. So once you do that, hit enter, and this will go ahead and add allow inbound rule. So we can see get dash net firewall rule space dash display name. So we're just looking at looking for this rule. Quotation mark type allow inbound 10050 and it ends with quotation marks as well and then hit enter you will see the same result i may have mistyped it yes i have so it's inbound here you go so this is all good to go all right so once you have done with the firewall the next step is this is the fourth step we are going to update our zabbix configuration file so the Zabbix configuration file we have moved to, we can get rid of this left side, we don't need that. So I will bring this in the center. Okay, so this is the configuration file, we are going to edit that. So I'm going to use Notepad for editing purposes because we are not going to make tons of changes. So right click and then we select edit. So this will open in Notepad. And the first change I'm going to make in the log file, at the moment this is not in the blog, but I will add that. So it's going directly in C drive. I want this to go in Zabbix folder, which we just created. So what I will do, C colon, I will just add backslash Zabbix. And you can see that this is the log file. So it goes in Zabbix folder and this is the name. And second thing we are going to update is the server. So the server is, it tells um, the Zabbix agent where is the Zabbix server resides. So server is here. So here we are going to add IP address of Zabbix server, which is 10.0.0.8 in my case, whatever in your case, just type that in there. It would be good to go. Okay, so this listen port, this is the default port 10050. Unless you want to change it, uncomment that and then update this port. Right now we can leave it as it is. So by default, it goes by 10050 anyway. So let's go ahead, scroll down server active so the agent that we are going to install it does passive checks so it doesn't need to be here however we will just update this to ip address of our zabbix server so it will be 10.0.0.8 okay so the next one so this one is an important one so you can see that this is the host name so you have to update the host name here if your dns is not working properly or it's a different scenario usually if it's a proper work scenario where everything is domain joined, you should have a working DNS. So here you can just uncomment this hostname item. If I do that, 
it will pick the host name of this computer which would be technext-wsc01 i can show you this so if i go here i'll go to control system here you can see that computer name which is technext-wac01 and uh, fully qualified domain name is technext-wac01.technext.local okay so this is what it's going to pick if i undo this however you can put the host name here and i'll just type in technext-wac01 okay so update the host name make sure this host name should match what we are going to add on our Zavik server that is all so what i'm going to do i'm going to save this and we will close this okay so the next step is we are going to install Zavix agent and we will define what configuration file it has to take if you run exe file as it is it wouldn't know what is the configuration file even though the file sits next to it but so if i use uh, powershell or you can use command line to do that and i will click on file here in the folder so i will go to open windows powershell as administrator so what we have to do is we will run the file which is just type zabbix za and then hit tab make sure it goes to exe you can see that there's a dot and backslash at the front okay so then we have to define the configuration file dash c and then just type dot backslash z and then hit tab again so make sure the conf file is selected once you do that and at the end is dash i it tells it to install okay so just hit enter okay you will see this message zabbix agent installed successfully event source zabbix agent installed successfully so we can also check the service so if i do get dash service and name of the service i would assume would be zabbix oh it's zabbix agent so if you hit enter you can see that at the moment it says stopped so what i will do i will go to task manager and go to services and it would be at the bottom it says stop right click and click start right click and go to open services so find zabbix here just make sure the startup type is automatic as well so if computer reboots Zabbix agent it kicks in so I will close this I will close this as well so now we'll go back to our Zabbix server front end so this is the Zabbix servers front end I will go to dashboard here so under configuration in the actual blog I'm suggesting to create a new group that's a step number six so I'll show you how to create a new group it's it's fairly easy so you go to host groups and then here on the top right create a group type a name let's just I'm going to call it test and click add so that group has added and now we are going to add a host so to add a host what we'll do we'll go back to configuration again I'm going to keep it out here so we will select hosts and on the top right we can see an option create host so click on that and host name as I mentioned this host name it should match what's mentioned in the configuration file so I have mentioned technext-wac01 okay so then you can just type visible name it can be the same as host name or it can be different so to me technext-wac01 makes complete sense to me so I'm going to stick with that so groups so the reason why I showed you how why to create a group because if you're not happy with any group listed here you might have to create a new one okay so what I'm going to do so I'll just click on select and then we will select our test group so I have selected the test group so interface IP address so the agent agent is running on WAC01 so I will paste that here 10.0.0.9 DNS name as I mentioned if it's functional then you just specify here otherwise you can leave it as blank okay so connect to IP see you have two options here IP or DNS so I will just stick with IP here port 10050 that's a default and description you can add description here enabled the box is checked I will click on add all right so our host technext-wsc01 is listed here and what we have to do now we have to attach a template to attach a template click on your host and then go to templates here 
and in templates link templates it says none so link new templates we're going to look for Windows OS so I will just type Windows so you can see the first one is template OS Windows by Zavix agent so I will select that and then we will click on update okay so host updated we go down here and we can see technics-wac01 and it has this template linked as well so right now it says it's not available yet but uh, we'll give it some time a couple of minutes and it should be fine so here we are so I just refreshed it and I can see that WAC01 is added to our Zabbix um, host so it is enabled and Zabbix is in green now let's have a look at how we can troubleshoot that if this doesn't turn green so what you can do is the starting point is try pinging okay so pinging it tells us networking is fine so I will clear here so you, you just ping your host or ping your um, IP address so in my case say it's 10.0.0.9 we have already tested it it goes through fine okay so that would be the first step and that's the starting point and second thing I would suggest you go to your endpoint and then in uh, file explorer so go to Zabbix the folder that we created earlier and then open that and here you will find Zabbix agent t uh, agent d dot log so if you open that you will find more information okay so if still you it doesn't work and what you can do double check the firewall rule so that the firewall rule is there okay so get net firewall rule display name allow inbound 10.0.0.5.0 and then hit enter you should see something there that rule is added and it is available to be used to check the latest data for your host you can go here in monitoring and then uh, go to your hosts and then select your host click on it and then we will click on latest data so some data is already listed here you can see that graphs are there if you look at uh, for example CPU uh, let's look at CPU utilization let's have a look at the graph you can see some information is already listed here that is all for this video let me know in the comments box below how did you go with your setup if you have any questions as well leave it in the comments I'm more than happy to help show your support give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel click on the bell icon as well to get all the latest news and updates from this channel I will catch you in the next video have a good one